Iceland has one of the highest life expectancies in the world, about 80 years on average. That's higher than the U.S. How do they do it? Today, personal trainer Raul Rodriguez is here. He's lived in Iceland for about 13 years. He's going to share their secrets for a longer, better life. And later, Matt and Raul will give us their secret tips for a great chest and ab workout. Very happy to have you here today, Raul. Yeah, thank you. Thank so, you I was a little bit surprised when you told me that Iceland has, and I checked, and it's true, has one of the highest life expectancies in the world. Because when I think of Iceland, I think of cold, and uh, very, I think of cold is what I think. Right. And I don't know, bleak and dark, <laughs> and I don't know, Arctic Circle. <laughs> so I would almost expect they have a shorter life expectancy. But is it because it's, I don't know, a more basic way of life or something, you know, that they're more in, is that, why, why do they live so long? Um, well, first of all, I, um, it, it, uh, it has to do a lot with their work ethic mm -hmm. and their diet um, because work is, is uh, you know, we, we talk a lot about exercise here in the West yep. and, and exercise is just another word for work. And, and uh, so because... You're taking the fun out of it. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, that being said, of course, uh, just like work, we get a reward. Mm -hmm. We get a paycheck at the end of the week. So that's... That part I like. Yeah, that's a nice part. And uh, what I found with Icelanders is because of their work ethic and because of their diet, and uh, I've researched this now, uh, not just with Icelanders, and, w and I've matched it with uh, other, uh, other cultures that have a long lifespan, like the Japanese uh -huh. and the Inuak Eskimos of northern Canada. Canada. Is it, the Japanese have the highest? Yeah. Is that right? Is yeah, it, that's there's true. an island or something off of Japan that right. you always hear about. And it's in, the, it, it's in excess of, of 80, 80 years, uh, 80 years of, of age. And, and same with the Inuak uh, 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 Eskimos of northern Canada. And it wasn't just the long uh, lifespan, but it's also the low incidences of, of infectious disease uh, like diabetes, cancer, and heart disease. So they're healthier. Yeah, they're healthier overall, uh, so they have a much higher quality of life. Um, and in, in Iceland, you said it's actually over 80 years now, too, right? Yes, it's over 80 years. Uh, the three of them are over 80 years of age. For men and women? Right. Because women, women tend to live a little bit longer than men, right? Right. Uh, men is actually just, just below 80, uh, just below 80 years of age, and women is just over 80 now. Uh, and, uh, and, and like I said, I've been researching this now, and it actually started uh, in 1993 uh, when I first visited Iceland, and I started to, uh, uh, I became fascinated with the country. Um, I think very few people actually know anything about Iceland, like yeah. the same thing. I would talk to my friends about Iceland, and they would refer to it as like, what is it like going to igloos? And, and, I, and I grew up in, in, uh, in Chicago, which is actually mm -hmm. ironically colder than Iceland is in the winter. I lived in Chicago for 10 years. Right, right. So, so you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yep. And uh, because you get the Arctic winds that come through central Canada and it's flat, that it's, it's much colder than Iceland. And, and, and because of the Gulf streams that come through uh, Mexico and up through the east coast and into, into Iceland, it actually, is, it actually is not as cold as... Not as cold it, as we think it is. No. Well, and well, what's the average kind of temperature for winter or summer? Um, I would say, you know, it, it's never like below zero. I mean, it might go to zero in the winter, but not, you know, with the wind chill factor in Chicago, you can get 35 below. You have 10 and 20 below without wind chill in Chicago and 30 right. and 40 below with wind chill. Yeah. Exactly. So it's not that cold. And in the summers, uh, they never get get, you know, uh, over 70 either. Oh. Um, but uh, but what the beauty of Iceland is, is also, too, is that because it really doesn't have any industry to speak of, um, that it's, it's still, a lot of it is, it, there's basically no pollution. Uh, the well, why is it fishing? And I don't know, I'm just yeah, guessing. Yeah, fishing, ac actually fishing is, is, is still their, their largest uh, export uh, right now um, for the economy. But ironically, less than 10% of the population actually works in the fishing industry right now. Hmm. They really jumped on the, the tent technology bandwagon. Oh, okay. And, and, but they eat a lot of fish, is that it? That's a secret? Um, well, you know, f actually uh, fish, uh, they do eat a lot of fish being on, on an island. And, uh, the, and fish being such a large part of their diet. Um, but more specifically, what I found was is their health uh, and their longevity, as well as uh, the low incidences of infectious disease, was tied into the essential fat that they were getting from oh. the fish. Okay. And uh, we've gotten a lot of good research now, finally. There's a great book by Udo Erasmus uh, called Fats That Heal and Fats That Kill mm -hmm. that, uh, that touch upon some of these subjects and, and how uh, these essential fats are, are important to protect the cell membranes from degradation. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and actually, you can actually now, it's been, it's, studies have been linking essential fats 
to either retarding or in some cases regression of, of the degenerative diseases like cancer and, mm -hmm. and diabetes. And is it just certain fish or what, what kind of fish? Um, I mean fish, uh, fish that, can, that are higher in, 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 fat, in essential fatty acids like for example salmon. Salmon is a large part of the Icelandic diet. They're, yes. they're pretty famous for, for, uh, for their salmon. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's a higher quality of fish. Uh, now that being said, of course, now a lot of farm-raised, you know, what, what we're getting here in the West is a lot of farm-raised salmon instead of coming from the sea. Um, because of course then they, they, they're even higher in, in, in fat. And uh, of course fat being healthy, uh, you know, because a lot of people talk about high fat diets and, and low fat diets and high carbohydrate diets. And I think uh, what, we're, what we're getting is because we're getting saturated with all this information in terms of nutrition, it's actually confusing the message. People think like how much fat is good and how much, is bad, how much bad is, uh, fat is bad for us. How, and, how much fat is good? Or bad. Well, uh, of course, it, it's. I, mean, I am confused. Right, and and I think a lot of people, like a lot of my clients, uh, uh, the same thing that I have to explain to them that it's about balance, variety, and moderation. It all depends, of course, on what your energy requirements are. Um, if, for example, the, the bigger you are, the more energy require requirements you have. The the harder your your work uh, is, the more energy requirements you have. So to say, you know, how much is it's. That would be like uh, a canned response for everyone, and that doesn't work. And I think that's what happens with so many people. They get confused, and they think what works for everybody is going to work for them, and that's not true. Because. So how do you determine them per person? How you, how you uh, I determine what their goals are, number one. Uh, number two, uh, um, what their energy requirements are uh, for either to maintain weight, gain weight, or lose weight. Because ironically, um, what I found as a personal trainer now, I've had... Um, in 15 years, I've had over 12,000 personal training sessions. Wow. So I have, uh, yeah, and, and so I have an extensive background in personal training as well as uh, performance nutrition. And you did a lot of training in Iceland too, Yeah, right? I trained uh, uh, in Iceland. I did, uh, I accumulated over 10,000 of these sessions wow. alone. I, I and, you, and you trained some of their, what, uh, I guess, famous athletes or who, who, who all did you train there? Uh, yeah, I trained, uh, I've, I've trained Bjork, uh, the singer. I've, I've consulted to her as well as a very famous football player named Ada Smaudi, who's probably uh, now the, the most successful Icelandic athlete, and I've consulted to some of their, uh, because they're also known for some of the strongest men in the world, I've consulted oh. to them oh. nutritional-wise. And uh, th so that's why I was fascinated with the country in terms of uh, personal training, because I thought like the wealth of experience that I can get, get from them uh, in terms of being some of the healthiest people in the world, some of the strongest you know, people in the world, and, and so some of the best athletes in the world, I could bring with me here to to the west. Okay, because you were in Chicago, right? Right. And this that's what drew you to Iceland, right? You found that out, or because when I left Chicago, mm -hmm. I moved to California. Because uh -huh. I'm going. When, I would say when people leave Chicago, they either go to New York or Los Angeles, and uh -huh. usually they go to Los Angeles because it's warm and we're tired of the Chicago winter. Right. So you went to Iceland. <laughs> people do not leave Chicago for Iceland, <laughs> but it's because. Um, well, you it, wanted to seek this out for your own. Well, it actually, um, uh, in a sense, um, I think we always seek, we always find what we're seeking for unconsciously, uh -huh. and um, and it started for me because um, um, I actually was in school at the time. I was in uh, college at the time, and I took uh -huh. a, a spring break to Mexico. And, um, and then you said in Mexico, I must go to Iceland. Yeah, Iceland's where it's at. <laughs> where I'll figure it all out. Forget Cancun. <laughs> no, it was too hot for me there. Uh, well, no, no. Actually, what happened was, is I went to Mexico, and uh, ironically, I was uh, I lost like 20 pounds wow. in 10 days. And okay, I'm going to Mexico. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't drink the water. Uh, oh, is that, <laughs> that what happened? No, no, no. Actually, I'm just joking. Um, actually, what happened was I lost 10, uh, 10, 20 pounds in 10 days. I came back, and uh, I started thinking like, why did I have a six pack for the first time in my life? I had always been an athlete and working out, but I was never really cut. I was like bulky and muscular, but never cut. And all of a sudden, I came back with a six pack. And I started thinking about like what it was that was From different. Spring break in Mexico, you came back with a six pack. Right, right. And, and so, <laughs> yeah. I don't think that's the way it usually works. No, me. exactly. And uh, so I went back to what I, what I actually did differently. What was different about my training there that I, had, uh, that I hadn't done previously? And uh, what I realized was is I actually, it actually happened from the changes that I made in my diet unconsciously um, because of the heat 
and I was moving around so much more, I started actually doing a little bit more cardiovascular to augment my, uh, my resistance training. And, and, I, and I started eating more natural foods, whole foods, instead of these highly processed foods. Uh, more, more green vegetables. I started eating more fat instead of avoiding fat like avocado because I craved, uh, of course, hydration because it's so hot and you're sweating, you crave fruit more. Uh, so I started eating more fruits and vegetables and healthy fats. Up next, we're going to meet one of Raul's clients who lost, what, 30 or 40 pounds um, using some of Raul's techniques. We'll be right back. We're back with Raul Rodriguez, and joining me now is Xavier Gutierrez. That's right. Uh, one of Raul's clients. Uh, Raul helped him lose, I don't know, what, 30 or 40 pounds? Actually, it was 30 you pounds. Today. Thank 30 you. pounds, okay. Uh, yeah, 38 to 38 be 38 pounds to be exact. So you told me you did this using your Icelandic principles, is that it? Right. Um, it, you know, and as, uh, as we were talking earlier, um, what happened was is uh, uh, when I started thinking about the nutrition and, and how it actually changed my, my body dramatically, um, I actually met someone from Iceland. Mm -hmm. And at the same time I, as I was contemplating like what was different about my diet, um, to make a long story short, I went to Iceland uh, to visit and I started to to notice how the, the it was very rare, if if any, that people were actually overweight or obese for that matter. Mm. And yeah, you know, I noticed that in Europe in general, mm -hmm. I think people are just thinner there. In fact, I always say, you know, like in Holland, the stereotype is the guys are seven feet tall and a hundred pounds. Right, right. Just extremely thin, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's true, and and, and not just Icelanders, but uh, in Europeans, uh, but specifically like in the Mediterranean as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I started to uh, to research this, and what I found was uh, that that also like Icelanders and all these other uh, cu cultures that had a longer lifespan and low incidences of of, of uh, heart disease and diabetes and other infectious diseases like cancer was it was all linked to their diet. Uh, the and 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 specifically that they eat more whole foods, fruits, vegetables, less processed foods, and essential fats. Um, so Xavier, what were you eating? Oh, a lot of fish. I felt fish. like an Iceland, like an Icelander myself. Well, this is the after, right? I mean, before. What, what, what oh, were you eating before, before you met Raul? Um, <laughs> anything I can find. I did set records. <laughs> Sounds like me. I appreciate that. <laughs> Yeah, I did set records in pizza parlors eating 36 to 40 <laughs> slices. I can't do it anymore, <laughs> quite honestly. We could do a show on that sometime, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. A, a pizza <laughs> competition. Uh, like Just that. get him on his cheat day, though. We don't want to break his, his, go his goals now. We have ambitious goals. <laughs> so you weren't too focused on nutrition at that point. It was just anything and everything. Yeah, pretty much. I, was, I didn't even have goals before. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do. But I was not, I couldn't focus on what exactly I had to do. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a true game plan before. And how much did you weigh? Before, about 207. 207, okay. Mm -hmm. And how old are you? You look I'm 23. 23, okay. Yes, sir. You, you have to see, his, he's got a picture, his, his license, you should show him he's got an, a picture of just, just six weeks ago when he was 38 pounds heavier. Yeah, okay, so you were 207 and you're now? Well, about 169. 169. Yeah. Okay, and you did this in how long? Uh, almost seven weeks. About six and a half weeks, weeks now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we got the picture here. I don't think the camera's going to pick this up, but uh, <laughs> see, it has driver's license photo. I can tell you, if you'll forgive my saying, you have a little chub of your cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> so. How did you lose 38 pounds in six or seven weeks? Well, you know, like based on the information that I gathered from training my clients in Iceland and uh, researching what, what they had eaten his, uh, historically, uh, as well as my experiences in traveling throughout Europe and in, 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 in Asia, um, what I realized was is that because of the same mistakes that he was making before I went to Mexico and, and, uh, and bumped into this, uh, this diet by accident was I changed his diet so I started balancing it out um, by eating more whole foods, fruits, vegetables, and getting uh, um, more, more uh, healthier fats in his diet instead of the low fat diet which I had always followed and actually I actually gained fat and maintained fat in some ways in some instances, uh, so I changed his diet and started adding more fish into it. More fish, okay. To, right, and, and a lot of fish. That, that's what you're eating mm -hmm. these days. A lot of fish. Oh, yeah. How yeah. much fish? Uh, too much. But <laughs> <laughs> no. At least he's honest about it. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but how much fish do you eat? I mean, every single day you have fish. Um, yes, sir. I usually have salmon every day, okay. and I love salmon. I'm glad I do because if I didn't, this diet would be hard. And what is this like? Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or what um, are we talking about? No, here? it's more like lunch and dinner, lunch and, and dinner. a lot of greens to complement it as well. The fiber, and, 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 and you know, what, what about breakfast? 
Uh, it, for, for breakfast, uh, a lot of times you'll have fruit, like a, a fruit, uh, a fruit salad. You know, to get, uh, of course, to get some sugars, some natural sugars as well as fiber. Um, but you know, like it isn't just the the the, the fish in, uh, that 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 in the essential fat that he gets from the fish, but it's limiting the amount of red meat because, mm -hmm. unfortunately, now because a lot of the red meat is so high in fat and and steroids, antibiotics and it's higher in saturated fat, it's, it limits the amount of saturated fat coming into the diet and getting more healthy fat, which lets them feel also too, you know, fuller and more satisfied. Okay, well I have a question. Now I can give up red meat. I, I've, you know, I, some people have to have, I could go for, for the rest of my life and right. never eat a steak and I wouldn't miss it. I just don't, I used to eat hamburgers when I was younger, but I, I don't mm -hmm. crave red meat. Yeah. But, I, but I hate seafood, I hate fish in general. Uh -huh. Except, unless it's, the only thing is like, it's like filet of fish at McDonald's for some reason. Yeah. I guess, you know, it's something that's happened, like not really fish, you know, whatever. Yeah, it's right. McDonald's. But, um, but I love chicken and turkey. So is there some way, can I do this with chicken and turkey? Because I'd like to try it, but I'm just not crazy about fish. Yeah, so. see, I mean, seeds, flax seeds, nuts, seeds. It isn't just that he eats fish to get the essential fat. I've also added more nuts, seeds into his diet. What, what kind of nuts? Um, like almonds. Almonds, okay. almonds are very healthy, for example. And, and uh, how much? How much? So, um, it, of course, like I said, the same thing. It's, it's based on your energy requirements. Oh, okay. And uh, for, so for me to say, like, how much to everybody out there without knowing everybody's individual requirements. But you just kind of snack on them or have them a couple of times a day or something? Yeah, a couple or? times a day. Yeah, I work it in more for snacks, like in between meals. So he also feels satisfied and in, in also to increase uh, yeah, his... Uh, his fiber, in, I mean, because there's much more fiber in seeds, for example, mm -hmm. than popcorn. The popcorn. Yeah, <laughs> for, yeah, for a snack. Popcorn was probably on the... So, so it's not just the, um, like I said, I, I, I learned about it in Iceland because of the fish that they were getting, the essential fat, but there are many ways to get it. You don't have to love seafood. You don't even have to give up red meat. It's about balance, variety, and moderation. Uh, it's not a low-fat thing. It's not a low-carb thing. It's about balance, variety, and moderation. And ironically, mm -hmm. Um, uh, it's funny because here in the West we have a, ten a tendency to swing either right or, or left mm -hmm. and what we'll find uh, in the end is that uh, it, it going back to what we did as it, our ancestors did primarily is it's, we, we eat small frequent grazers of okay. balance, variety and moderation. So how many meals a day do you have? About four to six four depending to six. on what process I'm going through. And, and that's another irony here is that um, when I met Xavier, um, I said, you know, the, um, we, and we discussed what his goals were and, uh, and, and his weight issues uh, um, because um, he, I could also too see that he wasn't comfortable um, at that weight. And, uh, and, he, and I said to him, you know, you need to, you need, he said, what am I doing wrong? And I said, you're eating too little. And you're, training t and you're training too much. Okay, I gotta get on that diet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want somebody to tell me I'm eating too little. Yeah. Uh, but, so, but the thing that I like, we were talking beforehand, you said though, but you do get to have cheat days though. It's not that you're just um, you know, on some crazy, awful, restricted diet. He wanted you to eat more, but you get cheat days. So how does that work? All right, works great because my mom's a great cook. And so she's always asking me but before, ahead of time, even three, four days before the cheat day, what do you want? <laughs> Are you ready for Saturday? <laughs> oh, yeah. I look forward to it. But, I mean, I, I, do, work, do, I do the work so that I can make the cheat day a valuable day. So what do you have on a cheat day? What, what oh, do you man. Now, that today I do have anything and everything I can, I can handle. Because sometimes I do feel like a big fat man after like a meal, and I can't breathe. <laughs> <laughs> but so, I mean, from, from your point of view, as we were saying earlier, but you, you think that's okay. I mean, he should just, he kind of eats whatever he wants on that day, and whatever happens, happens. And Yeah, I mean, well, of course, right now, because he's on a weight loss program, he, he, he's, uh, he wants to train now because he's changed so much. He hasn't just transformed his body, but he's transcended his life. Um, because losing this weight and empowering himself, uh, he's been inspired to take other changes in his life. Like now he's thinking about fitness modeling and, and acting. So he's completely, uh, this is part of the transcendental process. And because he's trying to lose weight, um, he's actually on a calorie-restricted diet. Um, it's just spread out over six meals. Um, right now, he's uh, just under 2,000 calories a day. Well, that, that doesn't sound bad. I mean, that's what don't they say usually 2,000 about average for a lot of people? Yeah, depending, uh, of course, again, uh, on what their weight is. Uh, of course, you probably would need more calories because you're a little bit taller and bigger than, than Xavier. So it's, it's, it's all relevant to the person's size. By the way, size. what are your stats? You're what, 6'1"? I'm 6'1". And, and how much do you weigh? 
I weigh uh, 179. 179? Yeah. Oh, wow. And um, how many calories a day do you have? Uh, right now I have about 2,500 calories. Okay. Yeah, to 2,000, somewhere in between there. And, and I'm, I'm also cutting down now for a competition, so I'm starting to trim down. I, I usually start by cutting out 100 calories less a week. Every two and weeks. What, what do you get down to then? What's your weight-wise and calorie-wise? What's your um, my my weight-wise weight-wise? It's 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 actually not too too different. It's about uh, about one seventy three, one seventy four. Um, and how many calories will you be eating when you? Uh, I'll get down to about seventeen hundred to eighteen hundred calories, mm. and I'll have like a, a cheat day also too on the weekend because also too it's better for the body. So I don't establish because your body becomes more efficient at at uh, at managing its nutrients, and you don't want Want to get your body used to what you're doing and become an economical machine instead of a fat burning machine. Kind of shake uh, up the routine. Right, because my body fat's always around five percent to six percent year round, and now I'm going to cut down to uh, to to three four. Wow, that's incredible. Well, thank you very much for being here today, uh, Xavier. We'll be right back with Raul in just a minute. We're back with Raul Rodriguez, and joining me now is Matt Vallant. He's a fitness model here in Southern California. Great to have you Thanks here today, Matt. Thanks for inviting me. So, well, I promised everybody you're going to give your uh, tips for chest and ab workout. I just want to say that Matt is a friend of Eric Carlson's. I've had him on the show before, and Eric won the best abs in the business contest uh, recently. And Raul said the only reason Eric won was because he was in Europe. <laughs> and as a friend, but they, they were both in great shape, and I thought we could all get something out of it today. So what do you guys do for chest and abs, and why don't we start with abs? Um, you know, like, of course, diet. Diet is, is quintessential to having good abs. That's what I well, realized. Yeah. Well, you came back from Cancun on spring break with the, the six-packs. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't ask you. I'm going to restart with you, man. I don't know. Did you go to Cancun on spring break? Uh, I never been to Mexico, no. <laughs> okay. But the key for my abs is doing it five times a week, you five know, week. for like 30, 35 minutes. So, you know. And, and what do you do the, the five times a week? I do like five, six exercises, but I try to do it heavy. You know, because there are people who do thousand reps, and you know, in my opinion, that's not really the key how to get great six pack. You okay. know, so I try to use plate, whether 25 or 50 pounds, and do it heavy. You know, and it's not about the reps, but it's about the. You so know, you're not just doing sit ups, or if you are using plates, you're, you're using weights with it. You're not. Just yeah, I do sit ups, but I have like 50 pounds behind my head. Behind you know, head. Okay. and do like 40 crunches instead of 100 or 200. Okay, so, so I don't know, can we get a shot over here on this camera, so you can, can you show us what, what you get then with five times a week? Well, we'll see if you're up to par here. Okay, well, I guess whatever you're doing is working. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you. so how many uh, sit-ups, or how many, is, when you got the plate, the 50-pound? Yeah, I, I think I need a 100-pound plate behind my head at this point. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Maybe, yeah. So I do three sets of these exercises, and then I continue with other exercises. Three sets, okay. And what are what are some of the other exercises? Leg lift, leg you know. Lifts. So I just turn around on the bench and you know lift my legs. Again, I have like 15 or 20 pound dumbbell between okay. my legs. So okay, I'm trying way, to do as heavy as possible. And I should say that you're the you have the Model America Championship. You won that. Yeah, that was last November in Hollywood, kind of like the biggest event of the year. So I'm very very proud, you know, about this. And you, but you told me though before the show, I think that you're actually getting in shape now for another comp. In fact, both of you, I guess. Yeah. So you're dieting too, right? You're yeah, yeah, yeah. The competition was last weekend, so oh, it was last weekend. Yeah. Okay. So you're okay. And then we also have a poster here from. Um, yeah, this is one of the things I'm very proud of. This is the poster for the new movie Pathfinder, which will be out uh, in April 2007. And I'm and wh where are you over there. there. I'm here, the Indian warrior with a sword. You're the Indian so warrior with a sword. So it's, okay. it's gonna be worldwide, and you know, I'm I'm happy. So and when I had a chance to work with Marcus Nispel, he's a famous director. He did the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Okay, so Raul, what do you do for abs? Um, well, I'll tell you, uh, first of all, in, in, in terms of my experience, I've been a personal trainer for 15 years, uh -huh. uh, and, and uh, like I was saying, I accrued 15 or 12,000 personal training sessions, plus I have an wow. extensive background in exercise physiology and e anatomy, nutrition, and kinesiology. Mm -hmm. And you have and, all the certifications? Or right, certification as well as uh, uh, a college degree. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the body 
changes when we're resting, not when we're exercising. So okay. I don't believe in overdoing anything. Uh, I do everything uh, in So now motion. you're going to tell me I don't have to work out. I can rest. Well, I, I, you know, that being said, if you challenge yourself in dramatic ways, I get dramatic results with my clients because I challenge them in dramatic ways in the gym. Mm -hmm. um, but um, many studies have, and, and I, I can tell you this just from my experience, that 70 to 80 percent of it um, is, is, is nutrition and the rest being exercise and rest and recovery. Um, and and uh, so in terms of what I do for, for my abs is I train them uh, three times a week. Three times a week. Okay. Three times a week. But I follow a very strict nutrition program. Like I said, I'm just starting to diet down now for a competition that's coming up in June. Because, I, yeah, I like to, you know, go slow and I'm not really in any hurry because I have until June. So I try to pace myself. Okay, well, Matt showed us his abs, so I think you have to show us your abs. So, okay, and, you know, I'm definitely not going to be showing my abs today. <laughs> and this is, like I said, this is my off-season shape. Off-season. So I'll be back in a couple of months to show you where, where I am now. <laughs> yeah, where I am then as opposed to now, so. Hmm. I guess I'll have to put Eric on notice that you, yeah. could, you yeah, two are creeping him. up there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so. So now, what do you do for your clients, though? How do you, you know, what, what would you do if I, okay, I need to get in that kind of shape. What would you do for me to get me in that kind of shape? Uh, first of all, like I said, I would uh, check, check uh, I would do, well, for each client that comes into me, I, uh, I isolate what they do and I integrate my system into them. Um, I would take a, a basic fitness assessment test, uh, which would include a, a body fat measurement, uh, your health, your, your uh, health background, his, your history, uh, and your level of conditioning, where you are right now, and what your goals are in, say, one month, two months, three months. And then I would break down the training and the nutrition well, I can tell to you reach those goal goals. Is, but yeah. I thought you told me you take me to Cancun for spring break, and then I come back with a six pack like you did. Yeah. That's what I was hoping, but okay. Yeah, I wish it was that easy, but at least that's where it started for me to understand really how the importance of nutrition. Um, in in terms of results, like you can do everything you want in the gym, and you'll work you'll work harder. But what I've come to realize is, in order to maximize your your results in the gym, and, and minimize the amount of time you're spending in that, because very few people have the time to spend, you know, ten hours a, or, or even five hours in the okay. gym. Okay. But our final minute, we tell me what, what kind of exercises do you do, though? I, I uh, hear about nutrition, but what what are you going to do for abs? Do you do sit ups or what? Do you yeah, I, I do. Kind of yeah, I do. Uh, I, I like to do Swiss ball. I'm, I'm Swiss big. Ball. Yeah, I like. I'm a big believer in. Core Core strength, core strength. Um, because I like to hit not just the abdominal rectus, but also the stabilizers around the abdominal rectus, like the serratuses, the obliques. And I find by doing exercises and even uh, uh, leg exercises or, or upper body exercises that put my body in a precarious position, uh -huh. I train the, all of my core, not just my abs. So the, the hanging by the legs or whatever, the, all, all that kind of stuff? Or? Uh, no, M more like I said, like Swiss, I'm, I'm Swiss a big believer, ball. yeah, Swiss ball and uh, even lunges, lunge walking uh, for core strength, uh, it really strengthens your abs because functionally you can't use any of your muscles without using your core first. Well, thank you both very much. You guys are in great shape and my God, I'm going to go off. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank uh, you. This is Raul Rodriguez and Matt Valent. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next time. Actually, I'll show one of your photos here if you've got that. This is Matt.